Let's see what happens when. Oh. Teaching Science with Henry Bent. Through the flame of enthusiastic teaching, University of Pittsburgh chemistry professor Henry Bent, a veteran teacher of 40 years, started a traveling educational chemistry outreach program in 1989 known as Pitt's Van Program. The Van Program's goal is to spark the imagination of students for the love of chemistry and science by taking authentic science to the public. Along the way, Henry has learned a lot while visiting hundreds of schools all over the country, talking to thousands of students and their teachers about their feelings for chemistry and science and ways to teach it. Hey, incidentally, these molecules are heavier than these. These are heavier, and you notice that although this balloon floats, it doesn't float as well as a balloon filled with hydrogen. Here's one that's labeled H2, I think. Yeah, this is H2. This is the hydrogen. That's the one we just burned. And if I let go of these, they'll both float in air, but the hydrogen floats much better. He has been passing on this knowledge by doing experiments, using his own enthusiasm and the world's greatest lab assistant, Mother Nature. I guess I've never enjoyed teaching more in the classroom or on the road than when we're teaching in that mode. When I find myself doing straight drill questions on the blackboard, solving numerical problems that I could do just as well on the printed page, if not better, um, I feel that's a pale uh, comparison uh, compared to what you do when you're doing authentic science. When you are doing experiments, observing what's happening, pointing out what's been, uh, happened, and then sharing with the class your inner insights in terms of atoms and molecules about why nature is behaving this way. Keep it in, pull it out, and you just keep testing for the oxygen. That's pure oxygen in here, and notice how well it burns. If the air is pure oxygen, any time there's a forest fire, the forest will just go like that. Good thing is a lot of nitrogen in here. One more thing. Okay. And that would be the other thing I would like to encourage the teachers to remember, that if they do, do inter introduce something like this, it's a great contribution to this youngster's education, if, especially if that youngster goes on, because they'll see the same thing over and over again in more advanced work, with more advanced points of view being brought to bear on what they're seeing. Actually, my feeling about science teaching is that you should obey the Hippocratic Oath. And the Hippocratic Oath is, above all, do no harm. So no physical harm, of course, yeah, especially sure. no mental harm, candle. psychological harm, by making you science a dull, boring subject by trying to teach it without experiments. There. Ah. This may look dangerous if you don't understand how nature works. But of course, we have practiced this many, many times beforehand on a much smaller scale. One shouldn't try to do any experiment where you don't feel that you have sufficient knowledge and experience to have to be doing it safely. So we'll set it up like that. Now, everybody in here, this may be loud. This may be loud. So protect your ears when Rob gets close to the flame. OK. Let's see what happens. I have to have it all the way. It has to go all the way. Yeah. Okay. It was a glass. <laughs> yeah. Good deal. Do it again. Do it again. Now, of course, this requires an enthusiastic teacher and someone who's comfortable doing science this way where you don't have the last answer, but you feel comfortable that you can fool around and maybe figure out a little bit about what's going on. Our problem with teaching that way is it's hard. Teachers are the same as everyone else. It's much easier to go into a classroom with a lesson plan that just requires that you talk and maybe put some things on the blackboard. 
much easier to do that than it is to haul out this equipment and to sort of test it out so that you're familiar with it and to use it and be prepared uh, if it doesn't behave as you expect it. Now, nature always does her thing. And I must say here is one of these little remarks I would pass on to any teacher who's teaching this way. We didn't put it in earlier, and that's the following. Never, never, never say to your class, now I will show you something. But instead say, let's see what happens when. And now the nitrogen gas is going into our balloon, right? Is it cool? Is the balloon cool? I think it probably is a bit on the cool side. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah because that's cold gas coming out there. Well, you know, these balloons get pretty big. You see how big they are over there? And this balloon isn't as big as that yet. Shall we let it go until it pops? Yeah. yeah like okay. It, huh? Go no? And you can, see the, you can see the old nitrogen just boiling away in there. And incidentally, it doesn't take very much liquid to form a lot of gas, right? Look how much bigger that balloon is. Look how much bigger it is. Let it go. I thought you wanted to pop. Let it go. It's frozen on. Frozen on. Oh, there it cracked. Oh. Kids love genuine science. Now, you they love to find out how the world works. First hand, not second hand, not by lecture, yeah. or just reading, but first hand. Best of all, with their own hands on nature doing her things. If I could give science teacher one tip, just one tip on teaching science, it would be this. Create enthusiasm. If you do that, and you ask your students at the end of the year, what did you like best about this class? Almost to a person, those students will say, your enthusiasm. The enthusiasm in this class was the best thing about it. Now, of course, the next question is, how do you do this? In science, the answer is very easy. In one word, experiment. Do experiments. Nature is a great assistant. She always does her thing. If you do experiments, you can always count on nature coming through for you. Yeah, see, it floats on the carbon dioxide, too. Now, of course, we've probably pushed some of the CO2 out, so if you try your match test on there again, let's see what the level is now. I imagine it's a little lower, and it'll take a little while for it to build back up. Well, it's up to about here. We ought to be able to float some bubbles on there. Are you good at blowing bubbles? Okay, so just see if you can blow some bubbles in, into, into here, and let's see what happens. Let's see where they come to rest. <laughs> there you go, yeah, okay, all right. That's pretty close to where you had the, the match went out. Match yeah. Uh, now, I'm gonna scoop, I'm gonna scoop some of this. Oh, light another match. Uh -huh. Just hold it. Okay, now I'm gonna pour this on your match. Let's see if we have some in here. Yeah, okay? Okay, now, have you ever smelled this stuff? It's a little bit like soda pop. Okay, I'll just lean back and inhale a little bit, and I'll, I'll pour a little bit over your nose. Inhale just a little bit. <laughs> right? Let's see if there's any left. <laughs> well, here's something we can do very easily with one of nature's neat substances called dry ice. Dry, it doesn't melt. Ice because it's cold. The carbon dioxide solid here evaporating, subliming. It's creating a cold front. There's humid gas coming out of my mouth. Watch what happens when those two fronts, the humid one and the cold one, meet. Here and uh, just break up this uh, rock ice so I can have more surface area for evaporation. Now I've got it crushed up, lots of nice surface area. I'm going to put it back into, into my bucket. So I'll take this crushed up dry ice and uh, just sort of dump it back in here. There. We'll try the same thing here. I just have the cold carbon dioxide, and I'll pour my hot water into it, okay? That's okay, that's all right.
kids love to see the combination of experiments and observations with imagination and logic. So they love experiments, they love to see how the world works, and then they love enthusiastic teachers who share with them our ideas about why and how nature is behaving this way. Well, he's showing you, this is dry ice sitting in the bottom here. It's the same stuff that comes out of a fire extinguisher. Here, I'll squirt some out for you. It'll come out in the form of snow here. <laughs> cold? Is it cold? Yeah. The other thing that we learned from these visits that we wouldn't have learned if we hadn't done them was the role of volunteers. Is there anybody who would like to torch this for us? Really? Do you really want it? Okay. All right. But of course, using volunteers has the great virtue, many virtues, for example, it shows there's no black magic to it. There's no trickery going on here, no sleight of hand. Nature's going to do the same thing for everybody. And we can just count on that. We don't have to light that balloon with a torch a particular way. We can have a student come up and do that, and that hydrogen is going to burn for that student the same way it burned for us. So that combination of an enthusiastic teacher talking about things the students have actually seen and done is just unbeatable. It's the best game on the block. In third grade and in fifth grade, we did a lot of projects. Like, we got a battery, and someone held their finger to it and we made a circle. Whoever broke the circle got shocked. And ever since then, I liked science. It's sort of exciting by the experiments and the things you get to do besides just doing the same old work instead of. But in science, you do a variety of things. See, well, first of all, you see a little fog up here because there's a fair amount of humidity here. You see some bubbles. See the bubbles? Oh, but look at the color change. Question, is this acidic, acid, or basic? Acidic, it's orange. Here's a little base. I'm going to add a little base to this acid, and I can momentarily neutralize it, as we say. Let's see what happens. There's, that's neutral, that's green, that's neutral, and now it's going back to the yellow. That's not quite the orange, but that's as far as I can get back. So we can neutralize that acid a little bit with this base, and then it'll turn back to the acid color. There's I, different ways to learn science, and I think this is, more, this is the fun way, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's much more fun to learn it this way. It's more, you can keep people's attention easier like that. They work either way. Eric, come over here and stand with Dr. Bakke so everybody can see you. And take this and just lay the balloon on this. He's got, we've got some liquid nitrogen in here. No, it's not going to blow up. It'll shrink. Just push on it. Push on, push on it a little bit. Not going to hurt you. What's happening? Lavoisier, the father of modern chemistry, the inventor of the oxygen theory of combustion, had what I think is the best of all possible advice for science teachers. Here's Lavoisier's number one precept for science teaching. Introduce no term, no concept, unless there's a need for it based on observation or an experiment. Point, then tell. Show, then tell. First, do the experiments. Let nature do her thing. Then talk about what nature has done. Now watch this. Let's have a white stick. Let's have a white stick. It's on the inside. So is that going to um, make the That's blue. Blue. What do you think that white stuff is? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, is that going to make this um, outside black? Yeah, it's on that CO2. Is that going to make the outside like really hard? Uh, I'll do that for you in a moment. So Why is that going through there? What do you mean? It's not going through. That's in space. Yeah. That's inside me, right? Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. a gas. And now we're getting the gas back. That's the amount of dry ice that had the sublime over there. The curve down here. Hey, that is not there. So that's that same dry ice that's down below. Who knew about it? Cool down below. Okay. And now that was, was that sublime? Oh, it will push the balloon back up. Oh, now you want to see what happens when you put something in here? Watch this. See that? Now I'll cool it down. 
and it will get very brittle. It goes through a, what's called a gla glass transition. And now, it's like glass. Right? But when that warms up, when that warms up, it'll be just rubbery. It'll just be rubbery. Yeah, and there it is. That's minus 196. That's minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. So, the first thing to avoid are just straight lectures. And the second thing to avoid are lifeless reading assignments. That violates Lavoisier's precept. Also, in a reading assignment, a student is being introduced to terms and concepts at a high rate without any need based on an observation or an experiment. And listen to what the kids say about that. Just listening to people read out of the book, I mean, that's boring. You read all day. All you do is you read. You don't do anything. You don't talk with the teacher. All you do is read. You read, you close your book, they give you homework, and you come back in the next day, read it again, check your homework, and I give you more. It's a teacher's responsibility, a science teacher's moral responsibility, to give nature a chance to do her things. It's easy. In chemistry, usually what you have to do is mix things together. Molecules don't react unless they bang together, collide with each other. It's called collision theory. Or heat things. For example, here's our friend again, dry ice. Watch what happens when we mix, so to speak, this dry ice with the warm water in this pitcher. I'm not doing a thing. Nature's doing all this. She is a tremendous lecture assistant. Isn't that pretty? Well, you can see how much better nature is than a lecturer. There's no way you can match that with words. If you think that someday in your life you might like to do something like this, you know, find out how the world works by doing things, and thinking about it, then here's what you need to do now. You need to learn to read as well as you can, and you need to learn all you can about numbers. And if you learn all you can about numbers, and you learn to read as well as you can, then later when you get a little older, if you think you want to do something like this, and so when we go out to our schools with our demos, we usually end with the young students with a remark that, hey, this is sort of fun, finding out how the world works. It's um, pleasant. You work in pleasant surroundings. You work with interesting people. They can pay you to do it because you get results sometimes that are useful. And so if you ever think you want to do this sort of thing in life, we tell the students there are two things really they need to do now as young people. They need to learn to read as well as they can and learn their basic mathematics, especially their algebra. And then that just leaves the door to opportunity open. And if you ever want to walk through it, the door will be open and you can do it. OK, to create a lesson plan, here's what I do. First, I ask myself, what can I show? What can we do? And then, and only then, do I ask, what can I say? What can I talk about? For example, after we've seen quite a few flames and played around with our fuels in various ways, we talk about the triangle of fire. To have a fire, you need three things. Of course, you need a fuel. In order to have something to burn, you need something to burn it with, oxygen usually, an oxidizer. And then to get those two things going, you have to activate them with heat. We call that the triangle of fire. And to have your flame, you need these three things, the heat, the activation, the fuel, and the oxidizer at the same place at the same time. The same way in science teaching. There's a triangle of science teaching. To get an enthusiastic student, you need to have three things in place at the same time. You need to have an enthusiastic teacher. You need to have materials for that teacher to use. And then that teacher needs time to set up those materials, get familiar with them, and to take them down afterwards. Take away the teacher, no enthusiastic students. Take away the materials, and you lose your students. Take away the time the teacher has, you won't have the demonstrations, and again, you lose your enthusiastic students. To produce your enthusiastic students, you need all three ingredients at the same place, at the same time, as you do the flame. And if you put the three things together, the teacher, the materials, and the time, then you will end up with enthusiastic students. 
Nature always does her thing for you. She'll produce enthusiastic students if you set her up that way with the teachers, the materials, and the time.